Today, I'm going to get my account reviewed by the one and only OmniArc. The catch, he doesn't know that it's my account. Join to see how this goes. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms gameplay episode with your very own Chappy Gaming. And today, as you can see right over there, I'm joined by the one and only OmniArc. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. So today we are going to do something on my channel that I don't think I have ever done before. And this is an account review. And I had one of my alliance mates send me this. And it's very timely because I think now that we see kingdoms getting smaller and smaller, it becomes a big question of like, what should we be considering as dead weight? What's not dead weight? And, you know, who should we be letting into our kingdoms? So I, I sent you all the photos in advance. So I think you've seen them now. Um, what's your first takes on this player? I took a quick peek, actually. Um, I have a couple of questions. I think, um, so it looks like we've got a March 30th, 2019 is like the start date for this player, right? Yep. Um, is Do you know if this is a free-to-play player or, or what's the what's the backstory here? So I've played with them for a little while now. My understanding is this player is more of like a mid spender. So they, okay. they spend a little bit on KVK, but they're not a whale. I don't think they've ever dropped a goldie. Okay. And yeah, so they've been playing for what? Uh, six years? Can I do math? No. 2019. Five years. So five years. Five years, yes. Jeez. Um, Rise of Kingdoms has been out for a long time. It's honestly, every time I have to, the number gets bigger and bigger every year. And I'm just like, oh my God, I feel like time has stood still, but it's, it's flying. Um, yeah. So I, I was looking through here and I, it looks like there is, when you go through the equipment, right? Cause there's four pictures, there's two cavalry marches, one archer march and one infantry march. Mm -hmm. But then when you go through the formations, there's five pictures for formation so it looks like they have a second infantry formation set but i don't see a picture of the gear yeah so what they told me is that they started working on armaments and then they watched my video on running only four marches and scrapped their fifth infantry march i see okay so and some people follow my guidance i don't know why but they do hey i mean you know what you're talking about you've been playing for a little bit i know um i think i remember seeing do, did you end up regretting that the scrapping of the fifth set? <laughs> so you did see a separate video that I made shortly after talking about how, yes, when it came to actual KVK combat, I did regret scrapping that fifth set just because if you're not running full T5 in all four marches, like mm -hmm. it, you just can't pick up enough kills in the time frame that you have. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, think I did make that <laughs> subsequent video. <laughs> I know. Um. I know some players that do only four march it. And for a while, I was only four marching it as well until I split two infantry, two cab, one archer. Um, and I think that you can do, you can make it work with four marches because then you can have your fifth march to either fill rally garrison or just leave it at like a good rune far away. And you'll always have those stats. But if you already built the fifth set, I feel like you just you just keep it, you know, especially if it's legendary because you don't you, you get uh, that that awful penalty for dismantling it. I know the half materials back kills you. And the other thing is like, and I think I said this on that video, my biggest regret was I didn't just scrap pieces that like are easy to get blueprints for. Like I still mm -hmm. haven't replaced that helmet blueprint. Like, <laughs> oh, the set. yeah, the set pieces. <laughs> so, yeah, mistakes were made, uh, but this I person followed my guidance, apparently. So. Well, I mean, that's not again, it's not the worst thing in the world. You can still you can still four march it. I think um I think let's let's start with let's see. Let's take a look at their cav march first. Do they do they did they indicate to you if they're like a you know, sort of a cav I guess they would be considered a cav main, right? Because they're running two yeah, cav marches. There are two cav marches here. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. go on that assumption. Yeah, okay. I'm curious to know if they got the because they have a special talented ring and a horn. Just one of each. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering if they got lucky with those or if they've been working towards that, because that would be crazy if they've been that lucky. I don't know. I can ask, but I mean, they do only have four sets, so I have to wonder if they got lucky or not. 
Yeah, because I would typically for players, I would recommend focusing more on your main gear before going all in on accessories. Because if you're lacking a ton of stats in the field, like getting that extra ring proc is not going to save you. Yeah. Um, also, it's so expensive to refine those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could yeah. literally like create a whole new set for that much. Yep, it's it's actually insane. And so the, your progress there is super slow, whereas with the other stuff, you can see immediate benefit, even if it is smaller. Um, so I guess you're looking at this account um, through the lens of like, well, maybe this wasn't your original intention, but you had mentioned this when we first started, that you're trying to think of kind of a good gauge for whether a player is quote unquote dead weight or not. Um, is that is that am I on the right track there? Is that kind of what we're evaluating? Yeah. I think it, it, it's dead weight. It's also like when someone's going to migrate in, do you let them in or not, right? I've had a bunch mm. of friends saying, hey, I want to come visit 1079. And it's like, well, should you? Like, sh should we let you in? Because we've just like booted a bunch of people after this KVK. I know you guys have done downsizings too. So like, mm -hmm. it's the name of the game right now. <clears throat> yeah, the, the that's the other thing too. Um, I'm in 1568 and we... I have no lead part in leadership, but I know that they're extremely strict and they're very lean. Like they want to have the leanest kingdom as possible. So, you know, the most power, the most punch with the smallest amount of players, obviously numbers matter a lot too. But um, yeah, they're very strict with who they let in. I think if you're looking like, I, I think that the definition of dead weight changes has sort of changed over time because a lot of times you would look at an account like this and say, well, you know, it's five years old. Players are going to say, well, there's only 3.3 billion kill points, which, by the way, more than my main account. But the I, I think what's more important is how it's like that saying, what have you done for me recently type of thing? Right. Um, if you got those kills in KVK two and three, you know, <laughs> you're probably not going to perform super well in sock. Now, looking at the gear and stuff, I don't think that's the case. Obviously, I think this player can pull their own weight based on what I can see here. Um, but so, yeah, so I guess really the question would be like, what are the recent KVK stats look like? Because based on power and kill points, I would say they're they're probably fine. I think they could probably really pop off with just four armies, especially if they have some good resource management and sources of resources like multiple farms and things like that. Makes sense. So you would let this player in, you think? Well, <clears throat> I mean, again, I don't. I have no leadership role in my kingdom, so I don't know how like would they let them in into my kingdom i i don't know um maybe not right but i think if, if the question is can this player pull their weight or not i think they definitely could um but it, it's really like you it, you have to be way more nuanced these days than ever before and i think that's kind of one of the cool parts about um on your profile now they have the lost kingdom like autark um thing that you can tap on and it says like most units killed most units lost most units healed that sort of thing on like every player's profile if they choose to share it um i think that's a really helpful tool for you know kingdom leadership to decide if a player is actually good or not oh that's really cool i'm gonna pull that up right now so people can see that yeah yeah you can see it on your own account too if you tap you're on pc so top left corner you yeah, tap yeah. Your you said the lost kingdom otarks there you can see that it there yep yeah and that okay. just shows you basically your best performing one, um, which is kind of a bummer. I wish it showed like your last three or your last five. I think that would be even more helpful. But I think uh, from what I can tell, I assume kingdom leaders are using that data on top of actually getting to know the player to see if they actually know what they're talking about or, you know, whatever the case might be. Yeah, that's cool. I also like that most units loss metric. I think it shows you like, is this person willing to die? Because like yeah. this player that we're looking at today, obviously they're not going to be a rally lead. Like <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going to happen. But right. you can see if at least they're going to be filling flags, which is which is helpful. Yeah, and I think based on their dead count, I mean, I think it's perfectly reasonable. They have twenty three million deads. I you know the again too. The other thing is you don't know are those are those fluff tier one deads and things like that. And that's why you have to always double check to see if the player actually um, is all legit stuff. But if we're just looking at like what commander pairs they're using. I guess, do you know what pairs they're using? Because we've yes. got... Yes, so they yeah. did send me that. They're using Ho Chu Bing with Joan. Um, mm -hmm. And we can see that Ho Chu Bing is maxed. 
I don't think we yep. can see the Joan in any of these photos, but they did say mm -hmm. that. They're using Nevsky William. Uh, they're using Budiko Azug. And then they're using um, Guan Scipio. And then uh, Lou Alex, if they run five. And then if they run four, they're doing Scipio with Lou. You said Guan... Uh, wait. Guan Scipio and then Liu Che Alex. Correct. If they're doing five marches instead of four. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> interesting, because they have their they have their um, armaments on their Liu Che. So if they're running that as secondary to Boudica, I guess, I don't know. I guess maybe that's... But yeah, where I don't do see you, Herman. Where do you see oh. the... So I'm looking through the photos. I see armaments on Scipio. Um, sorry, did I say Liu Che? I meant Zhuge Liang. Ah, oh, they must be yeah. running Zhu Ge Liang primary then. That's an interesting choice. Which would you yeah, put? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Uh, I mean, that's just me. I, I don't know. Um, I think it's just because of the timing from Boudica's active skill. But I mean, maybe they're assuming that Boudica is going to get more targeted than Zhu Ge Liang these days. That's if I'm being generous. Maybe why they would consider that, or maybe there's something to do with the inscriptions there that maybe I don't know about. But yeah, typically you would do Boudicca primary. Huh. So what would your advice to this player be? Like if they're going to try and fix things? Um, honestly, I don't really think there's an, anything that they need to fix. I think there is a, a discussion of whether you replace the Boudicca with Herman Prime and that would come down to how many sculptures they have. And now that we see Belisarius Prime kind of a mixed reaction, I'm being generous. It's been a relatively <laughs> lukewarm slash negative reaction. Um, Mixed reaction. <laughs> that's me being nice about it, yes. Um, I think if Belisarius Prime comes into the game as we see him, which I think is the case because I'm pretty sure he's already in the Chinese version of the game, then there will be no changes to his skills, in which case we have until, what, mid-July until we see probably the next infantry. Yeah. In a few months, of sitting around doing nothing that's my early read obviously we haven't seen at the time of recording this i don't know when you're when you're going to post this video we haven't seen in-game test results with belisarius prime no, and yet. we won't this will be going out within, within this week I, there won't be any test results coming out just yet right but if you guys so, are interested do hit that subscribe button uh right over there bottom right hand corner because i will be doing testing yes oh are you going to get him personally uh absolutely not but there are people in my kingdom who will be getting him who are whales. Love that. Yeah, so like I said, if if Belisarius Prime turns out to be as average as he looks on paper, which I don't see why he wouldn't, um, I guess the expertise skill nuance is going to be the big deal there. But um, if that's the case, I don't think this player needs to bench William. I think their calf marches are going to be perfectly fine. I, in my current KBK, ran Huo Joan, Nevsky William. It was fine. Um, the Guan CPO still slaps. Although the CPO, oh, okay. The CPO has an arch formation on there, and I was curious, but that's because they would run it with Liu Che secondary. Right. Because cause Lu <laughs> CPO Liu Che would be stronger than. At, at, it would be the strongest individual infantry march. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think, I mean, if they are only running four marches, I think they're doing the best thing that they can do. The only question would be, how many sculptures do they have, and would they be interested in, you know, going for that Herman Prime? I think some players in my kingdom have held off on Herman Prime. Um, I still think he's worth it. I think that like, you you go for it. The double AOE is super nice. He's a little faster than Boudica. And even with that, he's still pretty slow, which is really saying a lot. Uh, very <laughs> Archers move at two miles an hour maximum. <laughs> that, I think, is the biggest drawback for Archers right now, is that Zhuge Liang is everything that you could ever dream of, except he's super slow. Um, and so, like, you know, when I decided to run two infantry, two cavalry, I was really thinking if I should run two cavalry, two archers, but I had already invested so heavily into infantry that I just decided to go with it. Um, but now that I look back, I think I kind of made the right choice because I don't know. I just feel like archers, um, they're just they're they just feel slow. There's something about it. I can't really put it into words, but yeah. So at, at the end of the day, to come back to, you know, away from that tangent, um, 
I do think this player is doing the right thing. I guess let me look at some of the gear more closely. So for Zhuge Liang, they have, what is that, a four-piece set bonus with the Milky Way and the KVK weapon. A little bit of an unconventional strategy there, but I think it's perfectly fine. And they got to make good use out of that gold key piece, so that's fine. Um, and of course, you know, dismantling stuff wouldn't make sense. I guess the only thing would be for that set, if they were going to do, if they were ever going to branch out into a second Archer March, then they could move that helmet and chest piece to that second March and then do the set uh, chest with the KVK helmet, right? Right. That could then be a would cool do, setup. Yeah, that would be still be a four and two setup. Um, looking at the Nevsky gear, I think that works really would well. You do, a, would yeah. do, for this player, do you think they should have two archer marches or two infantry marches? Um, right now, that's a great question. I'm biased. I'm biased. I personally think two infantry is the way to go, and the reason for that is because after Belisarius Prime, the next release it, technically we don't know but in theory based on how things have been going it would be infantry and i think that infantry are in it a really good place right now especially with alex getting the upgraded relic and really no matter you know unless we get another sargon i think infantry could really pop off because if we get a smite damage commander well you pair them obviously with what That's we've already UJ, been doing yeah okay but if we get a skill damage commander, well, then you just bench Guan, you run CPO with the new commander, and then you run Liu Che with Alex, who has the double upgraded relic, and boom, you've got two golden marches. And honestly, right. I think Liu Che Alex in my current KVK was the best march that I used out of everything. And Gain it was said like, the same thing. It was insane. It's like a cheat code. You just go in and out, and like because of the expertise on Liu Che, you have a high, even higher chance of proccing the instant proc from. Alex's second skill, and so you, you get it more often, and so it, you just go in and out, and you just clap them with that 1700, and, and it it's crazy how much that, it like chips them away without them being able to do anything. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, so because infantry are up next for a release, and because they're already in a decent place, I would argue that you would go two infantry, two cavalry, one archer right now, but, you know, that's just me, and I'm definitely biased. <laughs> <laughs> No, that makes total sense. Yeah, I mean, if I look at where archers are at, I think they're in a great place. But also, again, I just feel like it's it feels really slow. Like YSG is great. No march speed. Um, you look at Ashurbanipal. He's got march speed outside of territory, which is fine. And people use him really well. But then if you really want march speed, you look at what Nebu. That's he's kind of old, but people still yep. use him. Henry, I think, is conditional on outside of territory as well, if I'm not mistaken. Probably. And that's Henry's governor commander who, I mean, I think he kind of needs to be expertise in order to use him in the field. That's my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I wouldn't use him in the field. At least not I've, as a primary march. Right. I, I've seen players use him in the field, and it's fine, but they do have to have him expertise. And it's like, do you want to expertise a rally commander if you're not a rally player? Probably not. Same thing with Ashurbanipal, actually. I feel like he has to be expertise to use him in the field to get the most out of him. Whereas Herman Prime, I don't think you need to expertise him. Boudicca Prime, I don't think you need to expertise her. You know, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's it's just uh, Archer's in, like, a weird place where, like, on paper you would say, like, yeah, they're great in the open field, and they are. But that march speed, I just, I don't know, man. It, it drives me crazy. And having the Liu Che <laughs> with Alex, there's so much march speed on the Liu Che Alex, it's insane. Oh, yeah. So to round this out, and, and mm -hmm. we're going to borrow from Plato. I'm sure he's <laughs> fine with it. Are we saying this person is a farmer or a fighter? Again, it comes down to, like, what have they done in their latest KVKs, right? Because, I mean, if they've gotten... Because this, this account's five years old, and they have 3.3 billion kill points. So if we do some quick math three hours later so that's 660 million kill points per year and how many kvks do you have per year three yeah that sounds about right so 220 million kill points per year and if they're only killing tier five then that means they're getting 
22 million kills per KVK. Your first year, you're probably not pulling down that many kills, right? Right, you're probably KVK still 1, KVK 2. Also, didn't they only introduce kill points since this player was 2019? They introduced kill points later, didn't they? Oh, yeah, you're right. It says not counted for points. Okay. So I guess we would have to know what that is for that player as well. But um, yeah, again, I mean, you know, if they've gotten a billion kill points for the last two KVKs, fighter. If they have been kind of just getting, you know, slacking for the last couple of KVKs, then then I would say it's farmer. I wouldn't I wouldn't say the kill points are high enough to be like, oh yeah, they're probably good. They're doing good. And what like do you they, think of their name? Love the name. Love the name. Shocked that it hasn't been uh, reported or something like that. Also curious, as a matter of fact, what is that? What what is the name? No, I know what the name. I can read it, but but what the flakes? Like, what are the flakes? I don't know. We'd have to ask them. Um, Got to be but on the arc. Like I have a surprise for you. Wait, what? This is my account that we're reviewing. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> it, wait, is this your main account? This is my main account that we've been reviewing this entire time. I see. So, okay, so that's I I love the video idea by the way. I'm I'm happy to be <laughs> part of this. This is awesome. Um that must be see that's why you only have uh four sets of gear but five it all comes together. Cuz I'm the dummy that made the video telling everyone to scrap it. <laughs> yep. That was that was okay. I see how it is. So mm, That's interesting. So, okay. Well, then I guess we know the answer then, right? Because you can you can reveal your kill points for the last couple of uh, KVKs. Yeah, so I can reveal my kill points for the last couple of KVKs. Um, this, the my highest score, and it's on the screen now, um, I actually got over 30 million kills this last KVK and killed a bunch of troops. It was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And I went up, like, I think it was over 500 million kill points this KVK. So it was... It was a big one for me. Um, it was kind of been. get up or get out. So I've been I working see. on not being dead weight. People always like to say that I'm a farmer and, you know, I always like to play into that to that uh, narrative. Um, even though past two KVKs, I've dropped over 30 million kills. I think I've done Ooh, well. Su subtle flex. <laughs> well, I mean, subtle flex. I got 40.4 million in my, my current KVK. So I felt good about that. But um, the when you look up my account on the, you know, scraping all the accounts in the game, my, I'm in like the top 9% or something like that of the whole game. So it's like, if you really zoom out and you look at all the players, if you have two point, whatever, or three point, whatever billion kill points, it's like, actually you're, you're in the top 10%, right? Which if you were to go to any other game, like if you looked at someone and said, Hey, you're in the top 10% of all chess players. You'd be like, damn, that's a good chess player. But for some reason, <laughs> Rise of Kingdoms, it's like, well, unless you have 10 billion kill points, like you're a farmer. It's like, well, I, I mean, maybe in this kingdom by comparison, sure, but like actually not really. So, you know, and I was going to make a whole video about that. So, again, it, it really just depends on personally, the way that I would look at it is what have you done for me lately? That's the that's the most important thing uh, when it comes to like recruiting accounts. And um, I wouldn't immediately call your account a a farm account what was the inspiration for the video yeah so the inspiration for the video um this was one i was thinking about for a while because a lot of people do account reviews all the time right plato mm -hmm. has a whole stream where he does them and yeah. i was thinking i was like you know i'd love for someone to do an account review of my account but not be biased by the fact that i'm a rise of kingdoms content creator and right. so I want I needed to pick someone who I knew watched my videos enough, but didn't watch them so they would remember which commanders I had. And you almost yes. got me with the with the equipment piece, but you I, I got away with it. But that was the inspiration was I, I wanted to get someone and I wanted to, I don't know, come out with something different. That was that was the goal. Yeah. And again, I think. You know, you're gonna get those. You're gonna get those comments from people that are like, "Oh, you're such a farmer. Your account's so old. You only have three billion kill points." But it's like, at the end of the day, if you zoom out, it's it's actually a perfectly fine account as long as you're actually getting kill points when it matters during recent KVKs. And I think I have a much more relaxed view on these types of things 
compared to, you know, I don't know other players who do account reviews. I know um, 12 inch does account reviews. It sounds like Plato does them as well. But at the end, end of the day, it's like, do you like playing with the players you like to play with? You do. OK, great. Do they mind having you there? No. OK, great. It's a mobile game. Just have fun. Like, that's it. <laughs> so I'm way it. more relaxed on that sort of stuff than most players, I think. I love it. Well, let's call it there, OmniArc. Thank you so much for coming on. If you guys haven't checked him out, although you probably have, because he's like, I don't know, 15 times my size, go check out his channel. It's going to be linked in the description below. And if you're new to here, feel free to hit the subscribe button. We got tons of new content coming out soon. Thank you once again for coming on the channel, OmniArc. This has been awesome. I had a great time, and that was a nice little plot twist. I love it. I'm happy that I could be the uh, the one to witness the... <laughs> The little, the little sixth sense ending there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you all. Say it with me, Omniarch. Shappy, Shappy out. out.